A lot of people think that the first waffle cone was made out of a waffle, but actually it wasn't. The story goes that at the 1904 World's Fair in St. Louis, an ice cream vendor was so popular that he ran out of cups. The man next to him was a Syrian baker by the name of Ernest Homwe. Seeing the ice cream vendor's plight, he took a zalabia, a Syrian pastry, rolled it up, put the ice cream inside, and the waffle cone was born. Ernest also invented the waffle cone rule. Don't make something completely new, reuse something old in a creative way. Evolution sometimes works in a similar way. For example, feathers that evolved to keep dinosaurs warm were co-opted for flight in birds. You do know that birds are dinosaurs, right? This mechanism of evolution is called exaptation or co-optation. It's when a structure evolves for one purpose in one environment, but later the same structure comes to serve a new purpose due to selection in a new environment. Co-optation may provide an answer to one of the mysteries of human evolution. All our different sexual orientations, some of which would seem to preclude reproduction in our ancestors. Natural selection, which works by the two rules, survive and reproduce, should work to eliminate any such trait. But maybe it isn't such a mystery. After all, we see homosexuality in nature all the time, don't we? Well, not really. Sure, we see same-sex behavior all the time in nature, in species as diverse as macaques, giraffes, and bedbugs. But almost always these individuals go on to mate with the opposite sex, rather than showing an extended or exclusive same-sex attraction. The one exception in the animal world other than us is with Ovis aries, domesticated sheep. Multiple studies have shown that about 8% of rams have an exclusive preference for other males. So we might ask the question, what makes us so different from the other primates? Well, one clue might be in sports. Not what we play, but how we watch them. The largest stadium ever built was Strahov Stadium in Prague, a gymnastics venue which held over 200,000 people. Try to put that many chimpanzees in a room and it wouldn't work. It would be chaos. For that to work, people need to be able to cooperate. I mean, you might want your popcorn right now, but you've got to wait your turn in line. Now, this type of behavior has enormous benefits. Our ability to be social with large groups of other humans has let us build great cities and fly to the moon. But from a natural selection standpoint, how do you get people to do that? I mean, how do you get them to do something so evolutionarily stupid, like cooperate with other people with no seeming individual benefit for themselves? Well, it turns out we already had something in us that gets us to do stupid things. Physical attraction. So rather than make a new structure for social attraction, natural selection reused an old one in a creative way. In this theory of sexual orientation, natural selection co-opted physical attraction for the opposite sex and reused it for a new purpose this time applying it in a smaller magnitude to members of the same sex to facilitate social cooperation. Ancient humans with this second form of co-opted sexual attraction had an advantage over those that didn't have it. They were better able to survive, perhaps by being able to cooperate with members of both sexes to build better shelters or hunt bigger game. They became our ancestors. Those without it didn't. We vary in all of our traits. Some people are taller, others shorter. Some people get more of the same sex attraction and less of the opposite sex attraction, and these people are gay. Others get more of the opposite sex attraction and are straight, and there's a spectrum of sexualities in between. The co-optation model of sexual orientation fits nicely with some other things we know about sexuality. After all, humans don't fit neatly into two boxes, gay and straight. Our feelings of affection are much more fluid and wide-ranging than that. Most of the time when people talk about the biological basis of sexual orientation, they emphasize a search for a gay gene. But this presupposes that being gay is an anomaly, and that therefore there must be some factor, the gay gene, that explains why certain people are different. This theory says that the trait to be explained is not gay or straight, but sexual orientation itself. So maybe the same phenomenon that lets us watch sports, build great cities, and connect on the internet also explains the wide range of human attractions. Maybe there is no gay gene. Maybe all our sexualities are caused by the same underlying rules. Thanks for watching. If you're interested, check the description for more resources. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments section below, or subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Thanks.